Hello everyone. Now, I've never made a video before, but that's not to say that I shouldn't. So I welcome you to my KSP series. This this is all going to be called something like KSP Career Episode 1, because for the life of me, I cannot think of a better name. So please, if you have any ideas, let me give me give me some help. I could use all the help that I can get. Now, in this series, I'm going to be setting myself the grand challenge of landing a Kerbal on every planet and moon in the game, hopefully re recovering them as well. Now, that's that's pretty hard. I've never done that, uh, ever, let alone all in one, one save. Also, this is the new career mode, which has funds. Now, that makes designing rockets even harder, because you cannot just strap a load of mainsails to everything and hope it works, because things now cost money. However, that's not the only uh, reason that this is going to be a hard series. I've also set myself some limitations. I'm not going to be using any quick saves or quick loads throughout the series, because uh, most people who play Kerbal completely rely on them, and I've got to say, I used to. So I thought, let's, let's try not doing it. That's how people would have to do it in real life. So that's how I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to be playing all the way through each episode as if it was one whole stream and there will be no cuts or pauses. Some bits will be sped up to make sure it's not too long but it's all going to be continuous. It also means I can't revert back so if an accident happens well some poor, some poor guy will not be seeing his family again. I'm also not going to be using any mods. This series is going to be completely stock because if you've just downloaded the game and even even more even trickier is the fact that I've never even been to some of these planets. I've never been to Moho or Elu, and I've never been back from uh, Eve, simply because it's pretty hard, and I've never attempted it, actually. But uh, I thought I'd give it a go. This should be fun. And now, that first ship you saw me launch was pretty much as basic as you can get. I even drained the monitor repellent from the capsule to make it as cheap as possible, because I kind of overestimated how much funds impact your rocket design. I've probably been a little bit too conservative, but as you saw I gained quite a, quite a lot of science, enough to make a good uh, dent in the tech tree right at the beginning, and I, th I got, yeah, 38 points of science and some reputation. Now I'm not sure what reputation actually does in the new career mode, so if you have any ideas uh, please uh, let me know, because I I wouldn't want to think it's something really important later on after I've been everywhere. So, so yeah. Now this next rocket is going to be a proper rocket with an engine and a uh, fuel tank, rather than just rolling around on the floor using a uh, questionable torque, which wouldn't really be there in real life. It's also the first time we're going to be using some proper science gear in the form of mystery goo which does stuff, presumably. I don't know what, I don't know how it tells you things, but it's gooey. So that's a good thing. Now I had intended to call this first rocket Prometheus, because as many space agencies do in the real world, uh, I've taken my inspiration from some Greek mythology, and Prometheus created the first man. I thought it would be fitting my first actual rocket be called that, but I forgot, so... It's just untitled, and Bob is well, riding in an unna unnamed vessel. But it should be fine, we should get some nice science from this mission. And I've ensured to add two parachutes, so that the landing is nice and safe. We should also complete uh, both contracts this time round. We've completed one, and the other is an altitude record of 5,000 meters, which should be doable. And I thought... Uh, that it was a good idea to go into IVA mode then, so blame past me or old me for that because we missed it. But the little icon in the corner is uh, flashing green at me, so so yeah, we got it, and that should it guarantee us a nice payout and science bonus. Now I've also landed at the KSC so that the goo can get data in a new area although I'm not sure how that would be different if it's only a few metres away, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> extra science is extra science. Now, we get another bit of reputation as we recover the vessel, which is good, I guess. I like seeing it go into the green, but again, I, I don't know what it does. 
Now, in this first episode, I won't be leaving Kerbin. I don't... I'm not even going to try and get into orbit in this first episode, simply because I want to uh, complete all the contracts before that stage, and I want to make sure that before I go to the moon or somewhere, I have enough science gear to really make it worthwhile. Because if I'm going to be visiting every planet and moon in the system, I I want to make sure that because I'm pretty much only going to be landing there once, I want to make sure that it's it's worth it in terms of uh, the science payout I get. Because now things cost money. Now here I've just bought the uh, stability package, where you get radial decouplers, which. With radial decouplers, you probably could go to the moon straight away because it makes it so much easier. But, as I said, I'm going to be doing some extra stuff on Kerbin because I want to make sure that I've got some science gear, like the uh, Science Junior, and just to make sure, I make sure it's safe rather, I want to have the gimbling engine. Now, this rocket is constructed in the space plane hangar, which I don't, I wouldn't recommend. The symmetry is weird, and I only really did it because I realised that the runway, uh, like the launch pad, counts as an extra area where science data can be gathered. Also, I've used a solid thruster in this video, in this uh, segment, because they're cheap and they're light enough, uh, relatively, so that I should be able to break the new altitude record that we have of 11,000 metres, which is over twice what we had last time. Now, I had packed two goo canisters on the ship, hoping that the rocket gets high enough to uh, get into the upper atmosphere of Kerbin so that we can get some extra science data, but as we're about to see, that doesn't happen. So, we may do and get a little bit of extra, but not enough. But, we complete the contract, which is the main thing that we try to do here, and although we don't reach space or achieve orbit, um, we do still get the extra science, 20.7 at the moment, and there's the moon, which, well, we'll be there soon, we'll be exploring it next episode. Now, as Jeb gets out of the cockpit, he sadly realises that there is no science to be gained up here, so I have to make do with a small goo canister that tells me nothing really. But on the way down, we... Now when we land, we should also land back on the runway, because I forgot to land, to take care of the samples there when I first launched. Which was actually, although unintentional, probably a good thing because it means that I can get a surface sample, because at this stage, Kerbals have not discovered ladders. They can go to space, but they can't climb. So, it means that Jeb can take a surface sample and without having to somehow get back into the rocket. Uh, yeah, as I said, I'm not going to be using any cheats, so the debug menu for anti-gravity is also out of the question. Now, this should be enough science to help us unlock an extra package. 20.7, that's enough to get us the gimbling engine, I think, as well as a bigger solid rocket booster. More reputation there, and... We have to recover the rocket separately via the tracking station of this one, which got us a lot back, a lot of funds back because we landed on the runway, which guarantees us a 100% uh, payout on the parts. So we lost, other than the fuel expended, no funds there, which is quite nice. Now we should have a new contract. Yes, 22,000 meters. I. Don't think in this episode I'd launch many more rockets, this should be the last one, because as I say, at this point you could get to the moon. It's going to be tight for fuel, but it would be doable, now that we have the radial decouplers. Now, this rocket is silly. Basically, it's got lots of parachutes, it's a little bit overly expensive, and lots of thrusters, five engines, but it should be enough to easily get us high enough to break the new altitude record without requiring too much effort. 
we're just going to attach some extra goo canisters because this should also be enough to not only get us uh, out up to the upper atmosphere, but also we should turn, we should be able to land on a new biome. I think the grass uh, next to the KSC is called the grasslands, so that should be able to give us some extra uh, extra data. Now, this is a very heavy rocket, the landing gear uh, buckled a lot under the weight, but this has got no match compared with the thrust. So that we should be seeing quite a lot of speed on this rocket. The G meter is increasing, but by the end, when we're so light because all the fuel's gone, we should be getting very, very sick in, uh, due to all the g-force that poor Jebediah is experiencing. I've used him a lot actually recently, so I may, I'm likely to switch to Bill or Bob later on. Wow, that was a lot of g- what was that, 11? <laughs> crazy. Now I know that the most a human can withstand is only about 10 g's for a sustained period of time, so Jebediah is likely to be crushed. <laughs> But who knows what kerbals are made of? It could be made of anything, for all we know. But he seems happy, he seems well. And we've just broken the altitude record and set ourselves a new contract. So really, who cares? And now, yes, we're up in the upper atmosphere, where new data can be gathered and uh, science points can be gained. Now we're running out of time on the video, so I do think this will be my last rocket. Then we should be able to go to the moon, which is hanging there in the uh, just above the horizon, foreshadowing what's to come. Now there should be enough parachutes here combined with the land legs to secure a very nice safe landing. And as I said, we have landed on the grasslands, which should be enough to give us even more science data. Also, Jeb is going to have to make quite a fool from here, and because, as I say, they haven't discovered ladders. Ouch. As he takes some samples, Jeb realises that the ground looks like dirt, and it, yeah, it does seem like Jeb has fallen hard enough to go through, at least uh, up to his legs. Extra science and slightly less reputation there, 24.9, I don't know quite what's happened there. But I'm happy. We've now gained some extra science data from here and some funds. Well, that looks like all we've got time for this episode. But just before we wrap up, we can now prepare for the moon expedition by buying the Science Junior and batteries, which is crucial, as well as a gimbling engine, which isn't crucial, but does help with stability. Because, as I say, no quick saves means accidents will be more serious. As for this episode, I'll have another one up soon. Goodbye.